Hey guys, this is a quick overview of my process for making this GIF. Um, I just entered it in a Project ED GIF contest. Um, I think the, pro the, the uh, contest is called Foodies or something like that. Um, so this was my entry. I wanted to do a behind the scenes or a kind of overview of my process for making it. So um, if you look on my channel, I have a time lapse of me creating the uh, assets for this animation. And um, I created those in a free program called Inkscape. Um, you can find that online. If uh, I could, I'll put a download link for that in the description. And what it is is a vector um, creation software, and it's pretty awesome for a free software. And then what I did is I brought this into HitFilm 2 Express, which unfortunately is not a free software, but um, it is a relatively cheap compositing software where I did all of my animation. So I exported it pretty much all of my... Um, assets as PNGs to preserve transparency and edit them in their own compositions. If we look over here in my project media, you see I separated everything into folders and you can see I s even separated individual leaves into their own PNGs and, uh, and the stem is its own and, and everything. And what I did is I brought those into their own composition. So here we have a, our corn composition. We have keyframes in rotation so that each individual, uh, if we kind of click on this Leaf, what we could see here is that our anchor point is down here by this part of the leaf and if we focus on just that part it actually with if you look at the frame of reference of this stock um, then it's you can see that our leaf is actually moving in, in that frame of reference it's rotating slightly with this with these uh, keyframes that's what these keyframes do and I did the same thing for each of these leaves and the corn as well as you can see I did that there so if we focus on just one piece of corn, yeah. And each of them is slightly different, how much it moves. So that way it kind of all looks kind of natural because nothing is too perfect. Um, so it looks a little more natural. And the stock actually on its own doesn't do anything. Um, I did rotate it slightly just because, it, I don't know, it didn't look straight when I exported it, I guess. Um, but what I did is I parented all of these to a point. If you're in After Effects, this might be called a null, I think. And then with this, I rotated the scale slightly. I'm sorry, I keyframed the scale, just the Y scale, so it kind of looks like it squishes down when it gets to here. And I also rotated, uh, keyframed the rotation uh, by a total of eight degrees, so negative four to four, and then back to negative four. So it kind of looks like it's bouncing in a kind of happy way if, you know, plants could be happy. <laughs> I don't know if that's possible. I don't think that's possible. And essentially I just did the same thing with each of these. So with the sunflower, what I did is I got all of the individual petals, the green thing as I labeled it, the brown stuff as I labeled it. I'm sure there's scientific names to all of these parts of the plant. And I parented them to this one uh, point that I named petals and just uh, added a rotation keyframe like I did in the similar to what I did for the leaves in the in the corn and I made it rotate back and forth kind of against what was happening what I eventually did with everything which is this blank point which I parented everything else to everything else I parented to this point including my petals my final petals so yeah, it kind of gives this illusion of moving back and forth. I didn't separate the individual petals because I didn't... I probably would have looked cool if, if they were all rustling together, but that would have just taken way too much time to animate. So I just uh, did... exported it all as one. And something very similar with the tomatoes. I individually rotated each of these. Same thing with each tomato. There's eight tomatoes total. T total. I actually, in Inkscape, created 10 individual tomatoes, but then it feel like exporting all eight of them. I'm sorry. I created eight individual tomatoes, but I didn't feel like exporting them all, so I only exported four and brought, dropped two instances of each. So as you can see, they each rotate on their own. And then there's a uh, point that does the rotating of the whole thing. This one I didn't, I don't think I added a squish to it, did I? Oh, I did. So yeah, even this one squishes a little bit. I didn't want to go, as you can see, I only squished down to like 95. I think in the other one I might've gone down to 90. Let's look at that. Um, 
No, I only went down to 95. Any more than that, then it starts to look distorted and the thickness of our lines stop looking uniform and they start looking different in different places. Um, and if you were to go in and actually physically measure these lines, then you'd notice some discrepancies because we did squish down, but it's not enough to notice by with the human eye. So what I did is I dropped each of these into um, my into my main composition, my main comp. Um, and if I just make these invisible, then you actually see that, let's see, perspective. I actually did edit this in 3D space. That's because I did have an original plan of something slightly different. I initially was going to have e a bunch of these soil patches and then kind of have them rotating. Uh, so that kind of gave this look of the camera moving through a field. Um, but that was just going to take too much time and this got the job done just fine. So I essentially just dropped down the sky in the background, then the sun on top of that, then the hills, and then the barn. And all of those things are static. They don't move at all. And then um, each of these, I dropped the, the composite we created, um, the, the three composites we created, then uh, this soil ping on top of that. And then because we're in 3D, there has to be a camera. And... Then I just kind of synced them up, figured out how long it needs to be, and just played that back and forth. Then I went over here, exported it as an image sequence, and then used a program called GIFCAM to make the GIF sequence. Um, I went frame by frame, and um, let me pull up GIFCAM real quick. So what you can do is with GIFCAM, you can hit... Uh, frame button and it records an individual frame and what I did is I exported this and uh, then as the image sequence brought it up in a, an image viewer and then clicked frame went to the next picture clicked frame did that I think there was a total of about 50 frames or so and uh, just did it did it that way um, let me show you my project settings oh thought it was freezing up on me there so I edited this in 720 720p um, I ended up down. I end, in the end, I end up downscaling it anyway because 720p is actually really huge for a um, a GIF, um, and we do have a five megabyte limit for Project DD files, which I was way under, even well after I um, trimmed down the or cropped it down or no, not cropped it, scaled it down a little bit. Um, I f I edit in 15 frames per second because it's the lowest it gets. My final GIF is in 10 frames per second, so I just want to get as close to that as possible. Since I'm exporting as an image sequence and recording the GIF frame by frame, it doesn't matter whether uh, what I edit in. It's just so that this playback is close to what I end up getting in the, at, at the end. I can edit if I wanted to. Oh, wrong. I can edit if I wanted to in 60 frames per second. The, the only way it would affect my workflow is the that the playback would not be very true to what I end up ultimately seeing. So the playback right now is just a little bit too fast um, compared to what I end up seeing, but it's enough for me to get the get the right idea. If it was at 60 frames per second, it'd be just way too fast, and I wouldn't know what uh, my end goal, my end product was looking like. So that's it. Um, that's the whole process of me animating this if you guys have any other questions feel free to leave them down below i also animated some words down here um, this process is a little different and um, i will get into that in a separate video um, but if you like this video please like it um, and subscribe and maybe check out my channel see see if there's anything you like and i will definitely continue posting in the future and hope you enjoyed see you next time